turn in the collection. Why don't you let them all off at the same time and have a nice fly around together? Well, that sounds a lovely idea, doesn't it? Nice romantic notion. The truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, I would end up with one very large one and not very many medium or small ones left because birds of prey are not sociable. By their nature, they'll get together at the right time of the year, they'll do what comes naturally, they'll raise their family as the youngsters, so they actively encourage those youngsters to go off and find the territory of their own. Because of course, the more harricots, the more species living in any one territory, in any one area, of course the more competition there is for food. And older birds that are slightly uh, off their A game uh, are going to be not quite as efficient at hunting a tasty meal for himself and have a nice full crop. But there's a good chance that he then go back out do a bit of more hunting and bring back food for the new siblings, the new brothers and sisters. So this highly structured and um, skilled communal hunting does make them um, rather unique amongst the birds of prey. It certainly makes them very suitable for what we do, as you can see. He's very happy to come here and uh, see everyone having a good look at him. Now the other name for this hawk is the bay wing hawk. Well you'll see where um, this part of the name comes from. But if we come close, have a look at the fantastic chestnut colours on the hawk's wings. Now this gives him the name bay wing hawk. Um, Harris hawk relates to the, the scientist who first discovered this particular species. Now Joaquin is a male, so he's in the smaller half of the population. The female is a third sometimes half as large again, so there is a noticeable size difference between them. And this will, in turn, uh, affect the size of prey that they hunt. Now, as I already explained, because they'll hunt and they go away, send you up <laughs> So when you're ready, Wookiee, if you concentrate, Oh, he dropped, <laughs> he dropped it on the way down. Quickly, we came before the gentleman eats it. There we go. <laughs> there we are. Little head that he's a uh, little head of a chicken he's got there today. Now actually, because I'm eating it, I'm going to give it a little more go. He did actually make contact with it. He sort of batted it um, with his feet rather than caught it. And uh, we'll give him one more little go at that. I think he's just about clever enough to think. Actually, if I do it. And uh, so as he, as he flew close to the people here, you can see that he doesn't make any sound with these fantastic soft feathers. And that's because if you put you were a, a mouse, a rat, uh, or even a young animal, it would also be on the menu. If you were one of those animals and you were to hear or see this great lumbering eagle outside, would you? If you've got any sense, you're going to get out of the way. So it needs to be as near to silent as possible. And so these, these soft feathers, of course, help to have an almost cuddly toy-like appearance. But in nature, they need to have a function, and that function is silent flight. No, 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 no. Hundreds of beautiful, beautiful birds. Yeah, yeah. um, Turkmenian eagle, of course, the first part of the nature, pretty much does run a bit wild. Well, the scientists, he's still deciding what these birds are. Oh, it looks like an owl. It's so huge. Now actually if we wanted to be um, scientifically correct, he's here in a bird of prey show. They're not actually birds of prey. They're actually more closely related to night jars um, and to cuckoos than they are to the true birds of prey. But of course we think of them as the same. So to compensate for this, he can turn his head to almost 360 degrees. Now we've got seven bones in our neck. The owl here has 14. So he's able to turn his head to almost a full circle. And he's hearing, like ours, his ears are on either watch, side of his no, head. Unlike ours, he's going to run. <laughs> 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 That's yes, cheesy! Yes, yes, yes. 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 That'll get you on the B team tomorrow. <laughs> doing that sort of thing. There we go. <laughs> and his ears are asymmetrically placed. So one is where you might expect it to be. The other one is almost underneath the chin, on the opposite side of the head. And this acts like a built-in radar and helps him to pick up um, sounds coming from all directions. His method of hunting is extremely lazy and he'll sit very still and he'll uh, listen out for the, the rustles and squeaks of animals moving about in the undergrowth, then he'll pounce down and hopefully he'll manage to be successful. Now he's uh, <laughs> having a good old runabout today, aren't you, Woodley? Um, 
he was harried, and so the noise that he's making when he's out here, this, uh, this rasping noise he makes is very much a call saying, feed me. I still myself and my husband as parents, and so when one of us is around, he will make this, uh, this noise asking us to feed him. It's there, look, you've missed it. And uh, my family also was visitors.